What's up, guys? This is Ryan Johnson with MoneyBass.com. Back once again for another episode of How Would You Fish It? And this time we're going to go over a little something that I thought of while I was doing my last live stream where we were going over kind of a comparison, the Mega Live or just live imaging versus versus the Mega 360. And which one would you choose if you could only choose one? And I had some footage in there where I was going over um, the Mega Live. I'm sorry, the Mega 360. And there were some rocks in there. So I'm going to uh, just to give you guys a quick explanation of how we do this each week. My long term subscribers, of course, you guys already know the routine. But basically, each week we get together, I will pull up a video clip of whenever I was out on the water in any certain uh, situation where I may have seen some type of cover structure, seen fish, and we just kind of look at the water clarity, water temp, what type of cover or structure we're fishing. And from there, we decide what type of bait um, we would use. So I put my input in there. You guys get active down in the comment section as always. Oh, and guys, make sure you always read the, des the description area. I put some good information in there. And also the products that you're seeing, I'm working with some of the suppliers and getting some affiliate links set up. So you guys can uh, just click on these links take you straight to some of these products and if you're interested in it you can go ahead and get it from there and maybe we will have some type of discounts or something like that included in some of those so i'm putting that stuff together for you guys been working guys been working on it been working on it you guys have been asking a lot of questions giving a lot of feedback so i'm slowly implementing these things to help you guys out as we move along all right so just wanted to go over a few things real quick make sure you guys hit the like button on the way in i really appreciate the continued support of the channel and um keep in mind our live streams we, we will continue to do those each week at 8 p.m on tuesday 8 p.m eastern guys so make sure you guys tune in for that and if you guys take a look down below we are still growing fast we have passed the 4,000 subscriber mark and as we discussed earlier in the year, the goal is to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of June, and we're on track to do that. But I need help from you guys. Please consider hitting that subscribe button so we can get these numbers to jump. Things are going good. Things are going good, guys. And also, let me go ahead and put this other um, information down here. Just have this scrolling across the bottom of the screen for you guys. The Patreon. The Patreon is up. It is active. It is new. I'm adding new content on a regular basis to that. I will start uploading more. So that is a work in progress. It will continually grow. Consider joining the, the Patreon to um, just to continue to support the channel. And let me see. We have the links in the description. All right. And some of these products, the last thing, guys, you can have them delivered the next day. So that's just something to look into. All right. So as I said, I'm going to bring up this video clip. And with the video clip, just take a look at it. Take a look at the water depth, water temperature, just any kind of pertinent information that you guys think you need in order to make a determination of what type of bait you would use. Put that down in the comments and then let's have a discussion about it. Let me go ahead and change this real quick and put my Instagram in case any of you guys want to contact me. This is my Instagram. I will go ahead and bring up the video clip now, guys. Let's see. Let's get this up here. All right, so here we go, 360 on some rocks. How would you fish it, guys? All right, so I'm out here with another way that you can dial in your 360 imaging unit. Um, as you can see, I'm over here with some rocks, nice group of rocks off to my left. And basically what I did is I came out to an area where I could physically see the rocks. All right, and this is a Helix 9 G3N unit. This one is a Helix 12 G2 end unit. All right, so now I'm back. As you can see, the rocks are back to my left. And what you can do now that you know those rocks are there, you can physically see those with your eyes. So you can see the big boulders, you can see the small boulders, everything like that. So all you do is you just go into your settings on whichever type unit that you have. So go into your settings go to 360 enhance and from there you can just kind of play around with the cut with the sensitivity and the contrast to get the picture the way that you want and sometimes depending on the water depth 
different things like that. You may want to come in here and just tweak it a little bit every once in a while, depending on how, uh, what you're seeing on the screen. All right, so there we go. All right, there you go, guys. I just added a little bit of extra information in there for you guys that already have your Mega 360. Maybe that extra information about some of those settings and things that I was using will help you out. But now I'm going to go ahead and pull this back up. Um, let me turn the audio down on it, and I will just kind of step through it and basically explain explain what I am seeing on the screen and what would um, how I would fish this. All right, make sure you guys have already got active down in the comment section. I'm interested in seeing what you're seeing from your point of view and how you would fish it and what baits you would choose. All right, so let's go ahead and get started again. Let me just mute this real quick. All right, so as we're looking at this and you can see the um, the transducer spinning on here and the rocks are off to the left. I'm currently sitting in about 12, 13 feet of water. It may change in just a second, but from what I see, for me, I am too close to those rocks for me to go ahead and fish it because I want to fish that those rocks from as close to the bank as I can all the way out until the the um, transition from those rocks into a smooth bottom or whatever bottom is at the bottom of that um, those rocks that we're seeing on the screen. So I may move the boat out to say about 20 feet or so to where I can still get a good cast all the way to the bank. All right. Now, after seeing that, the baits that I would use. First, I'm going to throw a moving bait, something that I can get down there, bang off of those rocks and get a reaction strike from some of the more aggressive fish. Depending on the water clarity, that will determine the uh, the different color of the crankbait that I may choose to use. So the crankbait, let me go ahead and take this off the screen now. That's all I wanted to show you with that. Let's pause this real quick. All right, guys. So with the crankbait, what I will be looking at is something like this. So I would throw a bright red color or something chartreuse. For me, largemouth really like these types of colors. If it is a spotted, more of a spotted bass lake, or I think I'm going to be targeting spotted bass, I may change this up and go with a more natural color, kind of like a sexy, sexy shad or Tennessee shad, something like that. Um, that just has a nice color to it. But I want to throw something that will get down to, I would say, eight to 10 feet. And once I cast this out, I will, I will fish this kind of slow at the beginning and let that bang off the rocks, just kind of do a stop and start retrieve. So to hit on the rock, stop, kind of raise up a little bit and just continue going on, raising up and just banging off those rocks without it getting hung up in there. You don't want to, sometimes you can just speed, um, just power, you know, just power through that and they'll, it'll deflect off the rocks pretty good. But I would say you can do it that way, but the way that I like to do it is to kind of slow roll it at the beginning, and then sometimes I would speed the retrieve up once I get it past the more shallow part, and I need to get that bait down there a little deeper. And I'll throw this on something like some 10-pound line, 12-pound line, something like that, depending on the type of cover and structure that I'm fishing. All right, so that would be my first option. The next option will be a shaky head, and let me just... Oh, actually, let me just show you the rod setup that I would use. Some of you guys were asking about that also. All right, move these rods out of the way. All right, here we go, guys. All right, so this is a seven-foot cranking rod. It is a medium cranking rod. Um, obviously, it's a ducket rod. Everybody knows the, you know, the white rods. And this is another bait that I like to use right here. This is a Spro and this has that more of a natural color that I was talking about. The lighting is kind of blowing it out a little bit, but it has a little bit of chartreuse, a little bit of blue, and has that, that nice white tint to it. 10-pound line, 7-foot um, cranking rod, and the reel that I like to use will be something around a 6-gear ratio because um, this is obviously a, on the more shallow end. It's not that deeper water. If it was deeper, I'd be looking at something like a 7-6 and a... Uh, maybe like a five gear ratio reel or something like that. And the next thing that I was about to say is the shaky head. I like throwing that shaky head. Of course, you guys that have been following my channel know my setup. I have the video for that. I will put the link for that in the description also that goes over the complete setup, the type of knot that I use, the, um, the line, and, and basically all of that, that entire setup. But the shaky head, 
using the trick worm, magnum, tri magnum shaky head worm, finesse worm. And also something that you guys may not have thought of that you can put on that shaky head, depending on the, um, the structure or cover that you're fishing. Try throwing a lizard on there, or you can throw some type of creature bait. So depending on the time of the year and also some type of craw bait, those work very well on the shaky head also. So that's just something to keep in mind, guys. But there you have it. That is how I would fish it. I will reply back to all of the con comments as usual. So I'm interested in seeing what you guys have to say. Make sure you get active down in the comment section. Hit the like button on your way out if you did not hit it on the way in. All right, guys, I will see you on the next video.